Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today we're gonna do another turkey cook to get ready for Thanksgiving. And this one is gonna be a little different. We're gonna spatchcock this, sous vide it, and then we're gonna finish it on the Kamado Joe Big Joe to get some nice color and crispy skin to it. So follow along, I'll be right back. All right, guys, this uh, particular cook, I put a poll up in my Facebook group, and you can find my Facebook group by looking in the description below. And what I did is I put a poll up for four choices on how to cook this next turkey, because I wanted to do a couple uh, turkey cooks before Thanksgiving. So I did one already, and you can see the uh, card up above here showing my other turkey cook. But this one, I, I left it up to my uh, group members on Facebook. I gave them four choices to either cut it up into pieces, sous vide it, and finish it on the camp chef, uh, either cook it whole in the pit barrel cooker, sous vide it, and uh, put it on the uh, Kamado Joe, and that's what they picked. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get this all spatchcocked up. We're going to use a different kind of um, brine today. We are going to dry brine it again. But what I'm going to use is some running wild smoky paprika. I love to use this on poultry and you can see I'm almost out of it. I have to order some more. But I love this on poultry. I use it a lot on chicken. It gives it a nice color. It gives it a nice crust. And then what I'm going to also do, I added some more kosher salt because it's not a very salty uh, rub here. But since we are dry brining, I, I put a little bit more kosher salt in there. And also I put a little... Uh, granulated garlic in there just to give it a little bit of a kick so all right i'm gonna be right back after we all get right, this all spatchcocked i uh got this all spatchcocked out and you can look at the video up above here to learn how to spatchcock poultry i did a video not too long ago about that so all you're really doing when you spatchcock is remove the backbone and lay it down flat kind of break the chest bone in the middle so you can lay it down and what i normally do is i pin my wings back just so we can get this as flat as possible. Um, also, this particular turkey was uh, from Sprouts and it was a fresh, young, semi-organic, I don't think they could really call it organic, but you know, it said it was, you know, no hormones and close to organic as you can get without being organic. So it's supposed to be a pretty, uh, pretty nice turkey. Supposedly they don't have a whole lot of injection in it um, So there is some to help hold the moisture, but it's not you know, not a whole lot of uh, injection in it one of the things when you are um, Spatchcocking a turkey or cooking it sous vide one of the things you do want to make sure you do is remove this little pop-up thermometer thing if it has one in it this particular turkey had one So I went ahead and took that out these things are really not that good you know usually by the time this pops up anyway if you're cooking a turkey your turkey's already dried out and ruined so take this out it's really for people who don't understand how to cook a turkey and they cook one once a year but take these things out because it will just mess up your turkey in your bag so just make sure you get rid of that so i got it all spatchcocked and what i'm going to do is i'm going to dry brine it put this um, mixture of the dry brine on that we put together and we're going to put it in our bag so we're going to dry brine this and let it sit overnight and then tomorrow we're going to throw this in the sous vide bath so we can cook it for dinner all right guys i'm going to finish brining this up and then i'm going to put it in their expandable sous vide bag and we'll get it going put it in the refrigerator got this thing all bagged up and um, this one's a 14 pounder the last one I did was right just under 13 pounds so about 12.75 pounds um, I would say this was a little bit harder to get into this expandable bag I would say I could probably get it up to maybe a 16 pounder 
um, and without too much difficulty. Um, probably not a 20 pounder. So if you got a 20 pound turkey that you're going to want to sous vide, you're probably not going to be able to spatchcock it and put it in one of these expandable bags. You're probably going to want to use a different type of bag. Maybe. But I've got it all set up. I'm going to brine this overnight. So I'm going to throw this in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow we're going to throw it on the Kamado Joe to finish it or throw it in the sous vide for four and a half hours. And then we're going to throw it on the Kamado Joe to finish it up. So, all right, guys. My uh, turkey's just about done. It's got another 15 minutes or so before the sous vide's done. So I'm going to go ahead and light up my Kamado Joe Big Joe and get this thing going. I already got some charcoal in there. I'm using low. So I'm going to use just a couple of these um, fire starters here. They're Rutland uh, is the brand, but they're like. Um, particle board kind of with wax in it kind of help start the fire I'm just gonna use three of those smaller ones today but these tend to uh, work really well this fire will be up and running right where I want it right around about 15 or 20 minutes I'm back. I got the uh, turkey out of the sous vide bag and as you can see it um, looks kind of dreary but what I'm going to do I'm going to put a little bit more of this uh, smoky paprika from Running Wild on there just enough to kind of cover it and like before I'm not patting this dry at all I'm just going to kind of leave it the way it is. I, th I think I did pat the other one dry but I'm going to leave this one as it is because it's really not that moist and I want that moisture to pick up some of this cherry wood and not a lot but just a little bit of the kosher salt because it is kind of salty you know um, from the brine but just a little bit not a whole ton I think that's it and I am still going to use some of the uh, duck fat in a can on it works really well so I'm going to go ahead and just spray a little bit of that on there. And that should give us a nice crust. All right, our fire should be up in about 10 minutes. So this will cool down just a little bit more and we'll put it on. I'll be hey back. y'all, just uh, wanted to check back in a little bit. See that smoke rolling out of the top there? We're going pretty good. The uh, internal temp of the turkey right now is 144, so we're getting back up to our uh, 148 that we were sous vide it at. So, grill sitting there right, right about 450, it says, on the ink bird, and right uh, just about 400 on the uh, dome temp. So, it's probably right about in between there where the bird is. I'm probably going to give this another just another couple minutes when it gets up to 148. That crust should be nice and crisp and we'll go ahead and pull it and let it rest for a minute and then we'll cut into it. Alright guys, it's been another five or six minutes and we're right pushing right to 148. We're at 147. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this and let it rest for a couple minutes because my family's getting hungry. and I think we're about done. We don't need to we don't need to take it over the 148 internal. I think the skin's going to be just fine. It's got plenty of smoke on it. Um, it looks kind of crispy and sprinkly there to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing pulled off of here. And I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Well, there you go, guys. It's done. It's right back up to 148 on uh, internal temp cooked it up to 450 there on the Kamado Joe Big Joe with some cherry wood that crust is looking pretty darn good to me just letting it rest here for a couple minutes I just pulled it off about three minutes ago still got some juice coming all the way out here but those legs look delicious I'm going to go ahead and 
pull this off. Juice is just flowing right out of it. Let me go around and get that other one. Come right off. Look at that. Looks beautiful. Still lots of uh, juice running out of that. Said the skin is not super crispy but I'm not one that really cares about having super super crispy skin I really like more juicy juicy meat like this where the juice is just rolling right out of it and I don't have to worry about it drying out so that looks like that happened here to me so it's cooked all the way through super super juicy and a little bit of that cherry smoke to it. It turned out awesome, guys. That paprika rub. It's not over salted. So you can just see how juicy that white meat is. It's tender, juicy. All right, guys, thanks awesome. for watching. I appreciate it. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.